Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for attending this conference, online conference, organized by the delegation of the Catalan government to the Nordic countries. Today's conference is the third one we are presenting, framed within the initiative North-South Dialogues. So far, we have brought the cultural sector and the life science sector as the main ones to underscore for the interaction that already exists between the two geographies, between Catalonia and the Nordic area. Hopefully, these links between the two areas will be growing in the future. Today is the food sector, the one we want to introduce and share with you. From the delegation of the Catalan government, in fact, we believe that it is our responsibility to fully take part in global discussions, presenting our own voice, in particular in the sectors where, to our understanding, we can show experience and knowledge. Besides, by organizing these virtual conferences, we always try to engage in a given topic discussion with the best to do so. Therefore, today, our counterpart in Denmark, together with our speakers from Catalonia, I would venture that they may be considered as a benchmark in the field of food. Understanding the complexity of the sector, given its important systemic approach and its cross-dimensional nature. I'm talking about an ecosystem, the food ecosystem, that includes a wide range of actors, industry, public sector, R&D, gastronomy, academy, agriculture, so forth and so on. Indeed, in Catalonia, when we talk about food, gastronomy, the food industry overall, it can be regarded as a key sector for our country's economy. No wonder we are one of the European regions considered a reference to the Mediterranean diet. However, at this very moment, the whole world and we are in a transition a transition that is heading towards a new model, which may be defined with some essential vectors, such as new forms of relationship between the city and its agricultural space. I'm talking about new forms of relationship, uh, relationship between producers and consumers. Also new models based on the concept of proximity and the reduction of food waste, preserving biodiversity and adaptation to the effects of climate change. Thus, production, distribution, trade, consumption of food, all of these should face this transition in which we are all involved. Needless to say, the COVID pandemic has strengthened even more the challenges and uh, vulnerabilities of our system. Ultimately, this very pandemic has boosted an overall interest in food, entailing how food is the very essence and the core element of good health. Nowadays, we easily see and we all have learned how in order to strengthen our immune system, it implies eating healthily and healthier. Immunity food is already becoming a buzzword. We all are responsible for bringing social change, for building a new society that must underscore the targeted purposes of guaranteeing to everyone their right to be fed. Unfortunately, there are still many people in the world who don't have enough to eat and putting an end to food waste. Many experts nowadays, academic, researchers, technicians, policymakers, are stressing, all of them are stressing the need to change the food production and consumption patterns to achieve global sustainability. This is what actually we were discussing with our panelists for their today's presentations. And this is what I am eager to hear and to learn from them, how we can improve the sustainability of the food system. In Catalonia, in fact, we are intending to fully commit to the SDGs of the Agenda 2030 as the path we must follow for our future. And it shouldn't be all that difficult. We must keep enjoying food, having pleasure with it, but now with a new sense of responsibility, uh, acting more responsible. Certainly, gastronomy, a 
as a concept closely related to identity and culture, it is also a buzzword nowadays. And as a such, it must be a word not only addressed for pleasure and enjoyment, we must embrace new concepts, new concepts, for example, the conscious food, the food awareness, concepts uh, that lay in the foundation of this transition towards a new model of society, uh, to a new system in all sectors. I won't contradict though, the fact that the terms of cooking and eating are definitely closely relate, related and linked to a social act, um, very much rooted in a culture and social attitudes. Friendship relationship is a strengthened by doing so. Family celebrations always are surrounded by food. In fact, the most important conversations always happen in the kitchen, don't they? But now it's time to move a step further in awareness and commitment and responsibility. Thus, indeed, let's move on. Let's move on to the core part of the conference. Before that, though, and if the audience wishes to ask questions to our speakers, we will leave after their presentations a 20 minutes time for an open discussion, for a debate. Thus, for those who are following and attending the conference, please be aware that you can use the YouTube channel, the, the chat in the YouTube channel, where you can post questions to our panelists and you can start writing your comments at any time. We have an outstanding group of participants today. Indeed, relevant experts from Catalonia and Denmark. I wish to thank all of you for your willingness to be part of it. And I am going to call on the first speaker. It is my pleasure then to give the screen for the first talk to Ms. Lise Walbon, CEO of Food Nation. The Food Nation is the food and agriculture cluster in Denmark, which, and as a trademark, is defined by the concepts of collaboration, quality, and sustainability. Food Nation is known for reinforcing close ties between researchers, companies, and public and private organizations through collaboration. Uh, let me add that this is the very word that defines the Danish way of advancing and finding better paths for doing and tackling challenges. By all means, its motto, the Food Nation's slogan, is Solutions of Tomorrow. Thank you, Ms. Wilburn for accepting our invitation and the screen is yours. Thank you very much, Fran Francesca, and thank you very much for taking the uh, initiative for this uh, great and very important discussion. And I certainly uh, think that your uh, opening speech highlighted the challenges that we are facing together, even though I will also take the opportunity to share a few uh, numbers on the challenges, challenges that we are facing. So allow me to share my screen and um, uh, explore a little bit more about the, the Danish um, perspective. So I just need to make sure that we are rolling here. Yes. Uh, as you also said, uh, Francesca, most good uh, conversations begin in the kitchen, and I completely agree. I have twins, 10 years old, and they are very engaged at home, uh, but it also makes some good new innovations around the table and, and uh, when we do the cooking. So it's really good not only to conversate, but also to innovate in the kitchen with your family and friends. Let me take the opportunity to just uh, add a few words about Food Nation. We are ourselves a public-private partnership. We are promoting the Danish food clusters, competences, products, and solutions. And we are the go-to portal for international private and public decision makers seeking more information about the Danish food cluster. So don't hesitate to reach out also after today. And just to zoom in on Denmark, I know probably a lot of you uh, know where we are, but even though I think it's important to say that we actually share a lot. So Denmark is a very small country 
in the north, but we do have a long and a very thorough track record as a food nation. And that is, of course, why I'm happy to share some of our experiences here today. I would also like to highlight uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, as you also did, Francesca. So the fact is that the agriculture and food industry has a vital role to play to realize several of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And I, I have to underline that we are, of course, in this together, uh, and cooperation is key if we are going to reach out for any of these uh, sustainability, sustainable development goals. So the important thing is to look at uh, these goals also as a business opportunity as may, and, and maybe as an innovation frame for new products and solutions that can be actively used in transforming our food systems. And that I will touch upon a little bit later. Let's just have a look about uh, on, on just a few of these uh, SDGs and the challenges that we are actually facing. So you all already touched upon the fact that we have to provide enough food to feed the growing world population. And that is certainly one of our biggest challenges of the 21st century. Um, the fact is that 800 million people are under nutrition today and must be fit. Um, it's one in ninth person who goes hungry to bed. And at the same time, we will see a growing um, world population. We will see it hit 10 billion by 2050. So in 40 years, if you want to have a perspective on these numbers, we need to produce as much food as we have done the previous 8,000 years. So we are in a hurry to transform our food systems. On top of this, we are uh, affected by the global warming uh, challenges of flooding, drought, and this farmland. If we zoom in on SDG 12, on responsible consumption and production, well, we do need to produce and consume responsible. This is a core part of the um, food system change. This is what it is about. And um, as I said just before, a lot of people go hungry to bed, one in nine. At the same time, one in every eight person, person is considered obese. And that is 2.2 billion people globally. At the same time, we will see a growing global middle class uh, demanding more foods. And uh, as you also mentioned, one third is lost or wasted of all food uh, globally. So we do need to look into how to uh, change our food systems. Um, so we have to be honest here, the agriculture and food sector has a huge role to play. 11% uh, of the global emissions is from the agriculture uh, production. And um, we do need to zoom in on how to produce more climate friendly and how to create systems and alternative ways of producing food uh, with the same amount output and raising the amount of output. And how did we actually uh, go there in Denmark? Because that is what I'm going to zoom in on. Well, we have identified a lot of uh, strongholds from a Danish perspective. And all these strongholds, we're looking into collaboration, quality and safety, sustainability, organic production, gastronomy, health, ingredients, and food tech. All these from different perspectives show how and with which initiatives we, from a Danish perspective, are uh, participating in the transformation of food systems. And if we zoom into the sustainability area, well, uh, in Denmark, we have succeeded in um, raising our production while at the same time lowering our input. So we use the term producing more with less input. So this is really a key. And if we look at the numbers, I have this graph with me, which shows how we have succeeded in decoupling the production volume and at the same time from the, from the greenhouse gas emission. The fact is that we've been able since 
1990 to raise production volume and at the same time lowering the greenhouse gas emissions with 16%. And this is the interesting part. How did we get there? And, and are we stopping here? No, first of all, we are not stopping here. Um, you might know that in Denmark, the, the government has set very ambitious targets that um, we need to reduce our emissions with 70% uh, before 2030, and that's from the 1990 emission level. And, and this is uh, why we are so keen on transforming the whole food system. One very important uh, message for me is that this transformation will not happen if we do not look at it in a value chain perspective. So we need to look into, engage all the stakeholders from farmers with their practical knowledge and development, academia with research and innovation industry, with new products and increased effectiveness, the government with dedicated resources and incentives and consumer with awareness and sustainable consumption. So this is how we will reach the 70% reduction goal. And this is also how we will change and contribute to the change of the food systems. If we look to some cases across this value chain, I'll just highlight a few and encourage you to take a closer look at our web website. If you take a look at the uh, primary sector, we are looking into the fact of using smarter farming through collaboration. So we need to incorporate all knowledge in order to be very specific with our input factors. If we look at also the uh, feed industry, uh, we need to look into how to um, make more uh, protein out of plants. And this is a really important area uh, for Denmark. What I would like to take a closer look at is the ingredient sector. And this case shows how the Danish uh, company Christian Hansen works with the bacterial culture to reduce food waste. So around the world, it's a big challenge. And if you add these bacterial cultures to yogurt, you are actually able to prolong the yogurt uh, shelf life. And in that way, you can reduce yogurt uh, waste uh, really much. And it's a good case in looking at small changes with big effects. Another really good and important case that I would like to draw forward is the app uh, from too good to go, which connects consumers with surplus retail food. So again, the challenge is that we waste too much food. And the solution is this app where consumers can, can get hold of unsold food from a variety of shops and restaurants and makes it easy to buy surplus foods. And the results, you might know it already, is that a lot of meals are actually saved. To conclude, I would like to say co collaboration is key. So SDG number 17, partnerships for the global goals are of course essentially. And also I would like to say we are really keen on collaborating across. Therefore, I'm also very uh, grateful to be with you today. So I will encourage you to take a closer look at our website and I hope to see you again, hopefully physically in the next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lise. As you said, we are in this together. We need collaboration and we are in a hurry for the transformation. You are absolutely right. So let's move on to our next speaker. Also from a small country with a long track as a food nation. It is a real pleasure to hanging over the screen to Ramon San Martí. Ramon San Martí is the managing director of Prodeca. Prodeca is the agency in Catalonia that promotes and, and provides support services in commercialization and internationalization, both local and inter in international markets, um, commercialization and internationalization to the agri-food sector, enhancing the value of Catalan food gastronomy. Thank you, Ramon. The screen is yours. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much, Francesca. And, uh, 
to thank, uh, obviously, all the delegation of the Catalan government to the Nordic countries. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity for us to share, hopefully to debate and to learn. And uh, there are lots of things we can learn from Denmark, from the Nordic countries. So thank you very much for organizing this event and to let us to participate in it. Um, I'm going to share uh, the screen. Um, uh, I think you can see it now, I believe. Um, I'll, uh, obviously, the, the Catalan, all the food systems are very complex. And our system is, is also part of it, this complexity. Uh, it's very important um, in terms of socially, economically, uh, territorially, in terms of environment. Um, Catalonia, it's, uh, it's um, in the Mediterranean area. It's one of the places with the highest biodiversity in Europe. And then we had lots of influence for lots of cultures and it's a very, very dynamic sector. I say this because I'll, I'll have to uh, give a very general overview. Uh, I try to, be, to do it all this in 10 minutes and uh, then uh, hopefully if there is any questions, we can answer uh, during the, this debate or if necessary after. I'll start by this, um, this new brand Logan, Catalonia where food is culture. We just presented uh, recently approved by the government of Catalonia, specifically by the, our Ministry of, of Food in, in the government. And the idea is to use it in all the events uh, related to the agrofood system, our agrofood uh, industry, our food events, nationally and internationally. This is in English, we have it only in different languages and, and, and in Catalan. And um, we, we mentioned this culture, we had a long debate about this, uh, where food is culture, because culture it means tradition, it means innovation, it means the culture of making, of, of doing business, of commerce, of the, the culture of taste, of the pleasure. In a way, uh, it's, it's, it's in a very broad, a very holistic view of, around the food. And let's say that agriculture precisely means a culture related to food, to the, to the agro. Um, uh, about this uh, broad view of culture, um, I'll give these five images, uh, which in a way are very intertwined. They really relate to each other, all of them. Uh, if we start on the top left, there is these olive trees. Actually, in Catalonia, we have the, 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 the biggest concentration of all trees, olive trees in the world, uh, in the south of Catalonia. Uh, and then if you look at the, at the top on the right, there is this uh, 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 oil, oil, olive oil taste uh, led by IRTA, which is an organization um, really very, very much involved with the high prestigious all over the world about how to help the production, basically the farmers, the industry. Then you go uh, on the bottom left, there is a picture of Alicia. Later on, there'll, there'll be a more detailed explanation, but Alicia is a unique center in the world where it puts together producers, health and, and, and chefs and gastronomy and to make great improvements. And one of them, for example, is the one you can see on the left, is uh, bottom of the left is this um, olive oil as fortification. And thanks very much to, to this, uh, all this research or industry. Um, and Ferran Adria was very creative in this either. And in the center, maybe I should have started there, there is a picture of a, a very typical dish from Catalonia, where we call it pan to market with olive oil. It's bread with tomato and olive oil. It's very basic, but uh, for one of the top chefs I'll mention now, it's probably the most representative dishes in, in Catalonia. So it involves tradition and innovation. And in this relationship, I just put two images. Uh, we have the Mediterranean diet. We feel we are the epicenter. We are Barcelona, Catalonia, very much of, of this uh, diet involvement. Also, let's say, there are a lot of studies saying that the the life expectancy in, in, uh, in Spain in general, in Catalonia in particular, is one of the highest in the world. And it has a lot to do with this, this diet recognized by the UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. You recognize also by the World Health Organization as one of the healthiest diets in the world, and recently by the Food and Agriculture Organization as one of the most sustainable diets. And then you can see on the right this chef, Ferran Adrià, 
uh, very innovative. He was uh, for five uh, years considered the best uh, in the list of the world restaurants, uh, the best restaurants in the world. He was on the top. Uh, he, they say, all the experts that he he's been one of the the person that really transformed the, the transformed the cuisine in the in this century, and and also was recognized in 2004 by Time Magazine as one of the most innovative people in the world. So Catalonia comes from this background. Let me add that um, the, the sector is economically and socially is very, very strong. We are one of the leading clusters in the agrofood sector, agrofood industry in Europe. Um, the, the volume of the, of the business represents more than 40, about 40,000 million or 40 billion uh, um, euros every year um, and uh, it involves this represents about 60 approximately, approximately about 60 percent of the gdp um, if uh, we included that just this is the primary sector of the industry related directly related to the agrofood sector if we also added the commerce and gastronomy it would be much more but uh, just the picture the figures of the primary and, and industrial Sector related to the food sector is the, the biggest economy, and most of it they are small, medium enterprises um, distributed all over the Catalonia, which also means that it has a very is a sector very much rooted in the whole and uh, the whole uh, country. As I said, we are a, a leading uh, cluster in Europe. Uh, it's some figures about the sorry they are in Catalan. There are recent figures from from the presented about two weeks ago. And uh, for example, we export about uh, 11,000, more than 11,000 million euros per year um, and almost all, all the markets. I'm not going to go into detail on this, in this issue. Let me just add that we, the increase of these exports has been gradually in the last decades and uh, it increases more the value than the volume. And it, that's also very, very important because it's a very dynamic sector, very competitive, and very innovative and always trying to add value to the to the products uh, we as far as we know we've been innovative in this first uh, food council um, we don't know anywhere else that this was uh, not so just uh, last year we implemented this uh, first so far as you know unique uh, organization is a kind of parliament related to food where it gathers all the agents that uh, participate in the food system, on the food ecosystem, public administrations, um, obviously producers, uh, distributors, research, again, IRTA, universities, Fundació Alicia also, and again, uh, later on will be explained, administration, but from a very uh, transversal view, it means uh, our department, but also the health department, the social affairs department, industry. So it's a very, very uh, transversal uh, view. Also the, the chefs, the gastronomies, the, con the consumers. This parliament has mainly um, the issue to debate, to put all this information together, to debate, to make all together the, the policies for the food policies for the coming Yes, is this idea of co-governments. And uh, through this, sorry, is also so far as uh, in Catalan, the first strategic plan for the food system, the food strategic plan for the Catalonia in the next five years, which um, it obviously it, uh, it follows uh, the, the lines of the, the sustainable development goals from the UN, from the, the Green Deal of Farm to Fork, uh, from the European um, 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 platforms or initiatives, the idea is to transforming the food system in Catalonia. And this involves, um, there are many different uh, lines or, or objectives and strategies and, and, and activities. I'm just going to mention that um, some of them to work, for example, in the public procurement, so schools, hospitals, contingent, the public buildings, etc. They are more committed to the local food uh, and to put into value all the system that the producers have in the country. 
this new concept of uh, sustainable agriculture, which I'll mention uh, later on, the creation of observatory and to control the food chain, this intelligent labeling uh, to promote the, for, the short food supply, digitalization of the sector, the concept of bioeconomy. Uh, if it's necessary, I'll mention that uh, later on. Uh, this is the figure that, about the organic sector in Catalonia is one of the leading um, in terms of organic in, in Spain, and you can see it's been increasing a lot in the last few years. It's a very active sector. Uh, the organic officially labeled uh, with this, uh, the CCPA is the, the Catalan organization that proves that products are organic. I'm not going to go to that because I'm, I think I might be a bit too long. We also have what we call the, the integrated production, which is it's a, between the what we call the conventional and organic. It's also very, very uh, strong. And something that we are working on from the government, and uh, it's a, we believe a novelty as well in Europe. We, we uh, some uh, our general director has presented this proposal in different uh, uh, international events, and it, it, the people are very, very interested. This, this new approach uh, that we call it sustainable production, which involves uh, environmental issues, obviously a health, the health of the planet in terms of soil, water, air, biodiversity, etc., but also the health of the people. So this concept of, of, of environmental in a very broad view. Also the, the economic view and, and very much focus on producers and consumers. Let me say that um, if there are not local producers, there are no producers uh, and they don't earn, they don't get the, the correct prices for the, the the jobs, the sector will have a problem. So it's very important, this economic sustainability and also obviously the social sustainability, the human resources, employees, the territorial cohesion, the, the food traditions, all this is together. This, uh, what we are working on is to have this certification and also this label that uh, in a way gives this information, works together with the whole sector to get these better products and to benefit the whole members of the change. And it's definitely a, a benefit for the, the consumers. Um, let me also add that uh, Barcelona is the capital of Catalonia. And uh, this year is the, is the, um, the capital of the, the World Sustainable Food uh, Chain System in, in uh, this 2021. This comes from the, the Expo of Milano, the, this idea that the, the feeding the planet, that was 2015, feeding the planet uh, and the energy for, for life. And uh, in that context, um, there is a novelty, very important novelty that for the first time, there is more people living in urban areas than in rural areas. And how we work together, so capitals in that case, cities get, they are more involved in this sustainable food system. And um, the, the, there are many principles, there are lots of information. There's going to be, this gathers about, I believe, about 200 mayors from 200 cities all over the world. And Barcelona there is organizing several events in, in this matter, or lots of events. And it's going to be a congress of all these members of, the, of this organization in October. Uh, just, uh, and the idea is, there are six main aims, food government, sustainable diets and nutrition, social economy and economy equity, food production, food supply and distribution, food waste. I'll just mention a few, two or three um, uh, programs we work together in that sense. One of them is already, we'll be working from the government again together with Fundación Lisi and other department of, of uh, the government of Catalonia, which is tourism. And uh, this welcome to the farm it's a uh, it's uh, the opportunity to to um farmers op they do they open the doors and consumers last the last edition was about forty thousand people this weekend had the chance to go and to contact directly to the farms to the producers to get to know how food is made and what implies what is there is behind an orange or olive oil or meat or fruit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So um, for us, as I said, it's a, it's a great opportunity to put together. We also involve restaurants, uh, which they offer menus. And what I'll do to be more, um, more um, to give more ideas, examples about this, I'll show you several pictures. Uh, it's a very much um, a family social thing to go there to see all these different um, farmers, productions in the, the whole country. This is a holiday, this is a, uh, you know, you can get an idea. It's an opportunity the day that farmers are ready to welcome the, the, the urban people mainly uh, so they can uh, ask, they can see, they can know what implies to then get the food at, at home and, and every day. This is a feel of, of cherry trees and uh, explaining this is uh, uh, some um, farms. Uh, as I said, the, the restaurants also participate with a menu specifically put into value these local producers. There are tastes. Uh, we're going to be very quick on this. Um, also focus on what we call it, it's called the foodies. People that are very keen, very eager to learn about what, you know, the properties in that case, they were doing a, a wine or an olive oil tasting. Uh, and then they can do also through this event some activities, culinary activities, and this welcoming the, the people to come that day to, to, uh, to learn. It's, um, it's a, a combination of this um, educational, of learning from all the different the, the, the citizens. Also, it has a component of, of, of commercial, of marketing. So far, the consumers can buy in that weekend and can identify, can get to know these products and then buy them during the event or later on in the markets, etc., yeah. or uh, and, and this combined with is a leisure with having a good time in a weekend in the in the countryside. Um, uh, about this, uh, the last two pictures to to finish. Um, this one is because together with uh, the Juntament of Barcelona, the Barcelona Council, and the organizations of the Association of Markets, we are working in a project to give more visibility of these local farmers, local producers in the markets. There is lots of products from around the country that are in the markets, but the consumers, they don't get the information who is the producer behind these oranges or behind this um, honey or behind, behind these vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. So we are working on this project to give more visibility through videos. We are organizing an event together with the Welcome to the Farm project. And uh, that's a, a project that we think is going to be very successful. And the last, uh, just to mention also a project we are working on from Prodeca together with uh, the different stakeholders. Uh, I'm afraid so far it's not in, it's only in Catalan, Castroteca Puncat is what we call the gathering point of the producers again, related to the products, local products, those who make these products, the producers, where we can buy these products in the whole, the whole country and also international restaurants, they are putting these products into value, recipes, roots, etc. And uh, from my side, thank you very much and, um, and pleasure to later on to have a debate and answer any possible questions. Thank you. I think you've got to travel. I cannot follow you now, uh, but I think you were towards the end of your presentation. Ramon, thank you. We cannot hear you. Uh, anyway, I think you were at the ending of it. Anyway, a very comprehensive, comprehensive information. Thank you so much. Bent Egber Mikkelsen. Uh, from the University of Copenhagen. Mr. Mikkelsen holds a Master of Science in Food Science and a PhD in Urban Food Systems Transformation, being also the author of many publications on public health nutrition and sustainable public food systems. Uh, Professor Mikkelsen, thank you. Sir. So uh, thanks a lot. Um, 
Thanks for this nice uh, introduction, Francesca. I'm really happy you mentioned the idea of urban and peri-urban relations. And I was also stressed by you, uh, Lisa, about collaboration. We cannot do this alone. We need collaboration and partnerships. Um, so welcome to my uh, urban food uh, studio here in the city of uh, Helsingborg. Um, I learned from the past month of uh, remote uh, teaching, I do a lot of remote teaching, that you need to spice up your studio. You need to spice it up. So I put my put on today my Mediterranean style shirt. I uh, I put up some nice Mediterranean cookbooks and uh, that I believe you were speaking about Ramon. Some nice uh, uh, food products from Nord the Nordics and from the Mediterranean to get in the mood for this uh, <clears throat> talk, which is mainly to argue we need for food systems transformation. We need policies and technologies. Of course, I'm going to show you some examples, but we definitely also need citizen, young people's engagement. We need the people's, uh, the people's part. So um, what do I mean with people? I know there's um, <clears throat> some slight disagreement on, the, on, the, on this quote, quote. If you're planning for one year, plan price. If you're planning for 100 years, plan people, which is by Confucius. And being a, a, a Confucius international visiting scholar this year, I think I, can, I need to dig a little more into the origins, but basically what I try to say is that, and I hope you agree with me, that if we need, if we want food systems transformation, we definitely need a hundred years uh, perspective. So what do I mean by planning people? Um, and, and, and first of all, I, I'm also gonna share a bit with you some of the insights from our research on food systems. And in particular, of course, the one the part of it that is related to uh, citizen engagement and people's part, the uh, young people's part in particular, what is the food system? Don't worry, I'm not gonna go into detail with this because there's no fun in saying that something is complex. It is complex and, and, and we don't have time to go through this. What our research uh, shows, um, the new development in, in food systems research is that most of all, this is place-based food system strategies are increasingly being related to a place, city of food, a city region of food, whatever. Um, and I can't help it, but I'm gonna show you, this is my folder. This is my folder on food system research. This is from the past four months. So you get the idea, it's simply flowing in all the time, new policy papers, strategies, research on all on food systems. So uh, it's really, um, yeah, it's really a lot. So um, how many food system cities do we have? Um, just to mention a few, the Milan Food Impact, uh, Food, and, Milan Food Pact, Eating Cities, UNESCO Gastronomy Cities, the least Gastro Cities, C40 Food Cities, and on the research side, you have Food Shift 2030, you have Cities and Food, you have Food Trails, plus a lot of new ones coming with a new uh, edition of the Horizon uh, horizon Europe. So it sums up to uh, uh, quite a lot. And I think uh, our research, better to say that our research shows that urban food system strategist is the new black. So if you want to impress your neighbor, your network, don't become a medical doctor, don't become an engineer, don't become a lawyer, become an urban food system strategist. I think we can <laughs> conclude it's hard to find a major European city that does not have a UFSS. Hard to find a mayor with not at least one person on the payroll doing UFSS, UFSS um, um, systems work. Now, interesting thing is what, is, what are then the components of these food systems? And <clears throat> I really like this uh, quote, which is from uh, one of the municipal uh, urban food strategists in Copenhagen. Foodies always want to do awesome things. What we want to do is the right thing, which is um, really um, important when we try to move from the technology side to the people side. I see a lot, I experience a lot of young people walking into my office and say, Ben, I want to do this. I want to build a two meter high uh, vertical farming unit. I want to do this, I want to do that. And when I think, start thinking, well, maybe from a nutritional point of view, that's not the most, the best thing to do, or maybe uh, have you thought about the energy consumption, the water consumption? 
that's not the important thing. The important thing is that we see a whole new search and a whole new, whole new wave of young people engaging in this food system transformation in a whole new way, uh, which I think is uh, really promising. So speaking about the components of UFSS, um, what you can do, there's a lot of things you can do, and there's a lot of things that city is actually doing. This is just uh, an excerpt from our research. So let's move to the, to the young people. A younger mind is a greener mind. So we see, as I said, new movements, new um, uh, engagement from, from young people organizing themselves. I don't know if, if actually Anne Hershey or, or Greta Thunberg has a, a particular position on food, I don't know. At least they have a position on climate change. But we see a, a whole new mobilization of younger people that wants to have a say, that don't want just to be satisfied with the opinion of good old boys sitting, sitting around the table. They want to do this themselves. So studies have shown that around half of young people, they do their best to live sustainable, unlike the parent generation, which is under one third. Young people, one quarter of them are actually vegetarian and they do this, as you can see here, for climate and environment reasons. So I think we need to get prepared also for um, including uh, the younger generation in, um, in our <coughs> food systems transformation thinking. So um, let me walk you quickly through uh, three cases, three projects, what we did, and then I'm gonna ask you five questions. And I know time is running and the round table is approaching. So three projects, Young Food Waste Fighters 2020, the Zen Science and the Magic of Food 2020, the Young Food Waste Investigators that we are doing uh, now, uh, these three projects. Um, and, <clears throat> and in the last one, Salia, we actually managed to broaden this a, a bit and say, uh, unfortunately not Catalonia, but who knows, but at least we managed to get a, a network, small network of Chinese, Brazilian, uh, Danish schools working with this. Okay, so um, what are we then doing? It's important for me to say, we're not doing cooking classes. Um, we don't do home economics and there's a reason for that. This is not a criticism. There's a reason for that. There's a lot, a lot of people out there that's much better than us doing this. What we do, besides being fun and educational uh, and, and besides catering for those people that also, or the young people that also cook at home, it's different here. So I like this quote because we do it differently. We do it experimentally and we do it, do, are doing it by adding scientific STEM principles and digital principles. So five cases and actually I, I set out to, to, it's quiz time now. We don't have time for that. So um, I'm not gonna ask you the quiz questions or actually I'm gonna ask the questions. Do you think it's possible to have seventh graders from uh, elementary school being able to build a vertical aquaponics facility and make it work. Do you think they can invent a personal 2D barcode based food waste assistant? Do you think they can develop a door to door takeaway drone concept? Do you think construct, they can construct a coal household garden robot? And do you think they can plan to build an indoor educational facility. So of course you are you are welcome to disagree and don't think this is totally impossible. Then you just write it in, in the chat box. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. But let me walk you through very quickly. This is the aquaponics facility. As you can see, it's all related to measuring biosignals. We measure PAs, we measure ammonium nitrate, show it on a graph. This is, this is actually the former, our former food minister uh, putting on the, the glasses here, as you can see. Um, this is smart barcode. A barcode is smart in the sense the barcode contains the expiry date, unlike traditional barcodes. So why not build an app that you can show to the minister that checks in your food in the fridge and alerts you once they reach the expiry date. So here's the fridge, the card box. Here's a drone, and the idea is basically to 
then can we have some plant foods in the field that we want to transport to uh, the consumer sitting in the sofa with the app. So this is the dome. And what we've got here, this is the coldable uh, robotic size, robotized growing unit. So it's basically, as you can see here on the right side, um, get the scissor tool. It's, it's like a 3D printer. Get the seed tool, get the watering tool, get the camera tool, look at the plants, look at the, at the, at the leaves and say, is it ready to be harvested? So this is what the, what the robotized bear, um, growing unit does. My last slide is the indoor um, vertical farming unit. Um, so thanks for your attention. I think uh, time is uh, close to being up. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join our World Food Summit uh, in the April uh, events um, and get your ticket to the Young Mind Solutions to Food Systems Challenge. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mikkelsen. Um, indeed, the commitment towards the education is the clue, meaning education for the future. But as you say, fun and education comes along together in your project. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. And last but not least, I am very pleased to give now the screen to Vinicius Marcini, a cook and researcher at Alicia Foundation, the Alicia Foundation in Catalonia, in the Bages County, uh, is a research center devoted to technological innovation in cuisine, uh, devoted to the improvement of eating habits and to the evaluation of the food and gastronomic heritage. It's no wonder that the bottom line of the foundation, Alicia, is to promote healthy eating with a social vocation open to everyone. I just want to remind the audience that the name Alicia, Foundation Alicia, comes from uh, the sum of two uh, words in Catalan, alimentació, which is feeding, alimentation, e ciencia, science. Uh, so uh, again, thank you, Vinicius. And as it is commonly said, these very days, Vinicius, the screen is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm also going to, to share here my screen just a second. Uh, I think as I think everyone can see already. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, thank you all for the invitation and the ongoing support from the, the Catalonian uh, government, PRODECA, the Department of Culture, uh, Agriculture and Food, and also our patronate, Catalonia La Pedrera. Um, uh, my name is Vinnie Martini. I'm chef and researcher from the Alicia Foundation. That's a pioneering research center dedicated to culinary technological innovation. Um, we work to the improvement of the eating habits, as Francesca already said, and also the valorization of the agricultural and gastronomic heritage uh, throughout the world, to be fair. Um, uh, we, we are part of a team with different backgrounds, uh, experiences, areas of knowledge, and also cultural traits. Uh, as you can see, in our group, we have food technicians, uh, kitchen chefs, biologists, anthropologists, journalists, nutritionists, chemists. So it's, it's a big and wild group, uh, like a melting pot uh, of knowledges and ambitions. And we have one, one only goal, that's to make uh, people eat better. Uh, this is our mission that's uh, very simple in words, uh, but not uh, easy to accomplish. Uh, when we say to make people eat better, uh, we would like to say people eating healthier, more sustainable, and also good. Um, from an inno innovative and responsible knowledge, respecting the environment and people. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, those. This is, this is our index. It's uh, a basic tool that assesses and quantifies uh, the, the suitability of a product or service that we are working on. And normally we like to balance in those three legs that uh, uh, it is, of course, uh, 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 the good part, the healthy part, and the more sustainable. Uh, to understand a little bit the good, 
we embrace this pleasure together also with uh, what we consider to be cultural significant and ethical. And, and the, other, the other side, we would like to make people uh, eat uh, healthier, so nutritional, nutritionally balanced, and this is to fulfill mainly our mission. And finally, uh, uh, the, 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 the more sustainable uh, part is to embrace uh, our ethical obligation, but also our open opportunities uh, for us in, in the areas that we are working. So we believe that uh, uh, um, focusing on sustainability together with the other two legs, uh, we open more opportunities to work with nowadays. Um, we are very lucky to be located in, in a beautiful old monastery near Barcelona, uh, where old meets new, where we can put together creativity and tradition. This is a picture of our monastery uh, that you can see. Uh, it's, it's an unbelievable surrounding that we have uh, that give us opportunity to reach different project, products, traditions and people and where we put in practice our development knowledge to further translate into concrete projects. Um, uh, we believe that uh, we have to work to product development to uh, increase uh, e eating uh, healthy eating habits and also education solutions and sustainable tourism. You can see here that uh, you can see from, from the left side our, our um, monastery on the right, our kitchen. Huh? Um, it, it's very amazing to be working in this, in this uh, area because our surroundings uh, we have we have together a consolidated food industry, um, an agricultural production hub, an important uh, consumption and distribution center uh, in Europe. So everything we try here inside Alicia, we can test right away here outside, and then we can export further to different areas in Europe or even in the world. To understand a little bit how we do it. Um, and, and go further in, the, in our 15-year-old experience from, from Alicia Foundation, I would like to bring a little bit um, uh, a, a food system that we created based on, on a, a Lancet food system. So I just adapted. It's, it's, it's very busy, uh, as, you, as you are going to see uh, uh, in, in the information in the screen. But what I want to highlight from, from that image, that in the center, we still keep the, the planet and the people. We think that together, uh, we, we will influence cultural shifts toward a healthier and more sustainable food preferences. And, and um, uh, you see that Alicia Foundation work with different stakeholders. So uh, I know there is a plan that goes uh, from, from uh, farm to fork, but we also work uh, on, on a different way uh, from Prodeca, we go from fork to, fa to farm. So we have a lot of understanding on what are the customer drivers and how we can bring that need back to the, to the food producers, to the food industry. So at the same time, we impact production, distribution, trade and consumption. So at the same time, we can be uh, helping or teaching children uh, learning about nutrition within the schools, uh, helping a food producer how to in innovate in their production line, uh, creating an innovative product uh, in the food industry, and at the same time, uh, impacting the retail on how they can uh, change the way they, they present something in the shelves or influence the food industry to bring something that the, the, the customers are demanding. So we work on these different areas, also including retirement homes, catering restaurants, pharmaceutical companies, hospitals. So we have a, a, a government, of course, we have a broad view of the food system and, and we impact slowly in each of those links that we believe that uh, simple, simple touches in those links will become a huge impact in how people and also the planet are going to, to be influenced on that. Uh, to understand a little bit our roots, 
Uh, I think uh, Ramon already said a little bit from that, but uh, we come from this creative revolution inside the culinary world. It was uh, aesthetic disruption followed by the valorization of the local products and producers. And I think this is exactly the link of Catalonia and then and then um, and then the 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 uh, uh, the north northern countries because uh, it's it's exactly the link in the kitchen that we are and um, our strength is to transform these creativity solutions for people both creating new products and services and also allowing people with food restrictions to be able to experience meals and cultural traits that they, they believe they could never do it. So uh, we bring what uh, you could have in five-star restaurants inside their home, inside their hospitals, inside the schools. So everyone can have a little bit of this, this, uh, this creative revolution inside the kitchen. Um, our method within Alicia uh, puts together creativity, scientific rigor and design thinking and also pave its ways to every project we do. We have three areas that uh, we just split to make easy to explain, but they always come together when, when we are developing a, a project. But to understand, for example, in, in Alicia Health, uh, we research and transfer knowledge to improve eating habits and well-being. Um, we work with diseases and also dietary restrictions. So we work in prophylaxis and also the cure using the food as, as the way to, to get to it. Uh, we also have the area that's Alicia Innovation, that's uh, RDNI um, in culinary. And the idea is to improve and develop products and processes. And, and finally, we have the Alicia Territory. And here is to generate a positive economic, economic impact with sustain, sustainable gastrotouristic strategies. So uh, they all come together in every single project. Uh, going back a little bit to the uh, Alicia Index, I would like to show a little bit how um, uh, what we, we work. So the, the Alicia Index identifies and quantifies our deficits and improvements in, in, in everything that we do, in every project that we do. But at the same time, uh, we have those five uh, SDGs that uh, are within Alicia's line of action. And as you can see, we impact directly 10 targets that you can see on the screen. Uh, these uh, also support that we indirectly impact a few other uh, SDGs uh, in, in working together with a company, with an industry, with a producer. So uh, just to understand a little bit uh, how, how everything that uh, we develop uh, in Alicia has also uh, an impact uh, regarding the, how the, 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 the strategic of the SDGs. And, and finally, to understand a little bit how, how we make people engage with food, uh, we promote the consumption of different food groups by making it easier to understand, cook and eat. We enhance health, sustainability and pleasure properties. We encourage the consumption of local and seasonal products. We promote responsible consumption and the prevention of food waste. We develop strategies to enhance the value visibility and positioning of a product. We search alternatives for devaluated products by appearance or expiring dates. We develop new strategies, services and products based on market drivers and scientific research. We find alternatives for byproducts. And finally, we promote producers and traditional knowledge. This is a little bit how we impact the food system. So uh, we believe that the best way to make people engage with food in a healthy and sustainable diet is promoting tangible behavior changes. I think, thank you very much. Uh, I think I got my time. Huh? Uh, thank you, <laughs> sorry. I think there was a, a technical problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Exciting work. And in fact, uh, your endeavors must be a guidance and an example. Thank you to all of you. 
And thank you so much for your ideas, for inspiring us this afternoon. Now we move on and it's time for the Q&A part. We are going to open a debate. Uh, and I am convinced that there will be insightful discussions between our speakers uh, responding the questions posed by the audience. We have fairly a good number of questions. Thank you very much also the audience for, for posing um, the questions to our panel of experts. Um, I'm going to start uh, two questions which are linked, addressed to Lise, Lise Walbum. Um, Carla Villanueva says, about the Danish system, is there any policy to address the problem of surplus food that ends up being undercut in Danish supermarkets? And Andrea Gutierrez Camacho, following uh, this question, uh, she uh, adds, uh, if there is no such a policy, if the policy is not in place, are there any collaborations with food producers or with middlemen throughout the food value chain to mitigate the food waste? Mm, thank you very much for these uh, very relevant questions. Um, Denmark has come a long way in order to reduce food loss and waste, but we do not have policies on the area. The fact is that we have been working with the collaborative approach and the volunteer approach uh, for many years, but this government certainly has it as a political goal to reduce food loss and waste. This is also why we have um, established, there has been established uh, a national think tank called One Third, which also invites other countries to participate in this important goal of reducing food loss and waste. And of course, the think tank is called One Third, referring to the SDG of reducing the food loss and waste with One Third in 2030. And this think tank has taken several initiatives as well as has other uh, stakeholders in the Danish food value chain. But one of the initiatives is uh, launched this summer, where uh, a broad um, a group of stakeholders joined in this um, volunteer agreement, where we both see the supermarkets, organizations, and companies signing up to reduce the food loss and waste from a Danish perspective. But it's very important to me to say that this think tank also have an international perspective and if there are any of the participants today who wants to uh, know more about this initiative or wants to join up some of the um, uh, initiatives, I will suggest you to, to reach out as, uh, and as Ben also referred to, we have this World Food Summit coming up in April where we will certainly invite all stakeholders to join in the discussions and food loss and waste is also a subject here. So there's a really good opportunity to engage yourself in the uh, dialogue to come. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Lise. Um, there is also a, a question or a comment by Tony Massanese, also from, uh, from the Sierra Alicia. And this is for all of you, but I mean, you can answer at your own pace. Uh, Tony Messines says, how important is it to consider not only technology, technology, but also gastronomic heritage, uh, food culture and local biodiversity when it comes to innovating in a sustainable way? Uh, don't you think, actually? Uh, I don't know. Lisa, maybe again? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I'd like to start out. I think everyone might have uh, reflections on this. Um, well, I think it will be a, um, a, a business no-brainer not to include all the mentioned um, and very relevant areas that, the, that we are getting highlighted here in the questions. So, of course, we need to combine the different uh, knowledge and competences, both from the from the food culture, from the heritage, but of course also from the technological part. Only by combining and building upon the different 
areas, we will, we will uh, have the ability to reach these important goals and the change, uh, the important and necessary change of the food systems. So from my point of view, you are not, uh, I will not make some kind of prioritization between these areas. I'll just say we need to incorporate all the different uh, aspects in innovating foods and uh, in the transition of the food systems. Okay, Ben, I think you wanted to add something, yes. Yes, I, I couldn't no. agree more in the, in the culinary and gastronomic part. I mean, one example would be, first of all, I would say, well, it needs to be culturally adapted. What works in Catalonia is probably not the same that works in, in the Nordic countries. That's one thing. The second thing is that the whole discussion on alternative protein resources and plant-based foods uh, raises also the question on what, what is the gastronomic part of that? What is the gastronomic dimension? Because basically when you speak about new types of biomasses, uh, they can be anything from insects to let's say things that are cultivated by, in, by, by LDA culture. Any protein source can basically be pumped around in systems, stainless steel and end up with a sort of a, a uncertain biomass and, 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 and with, with probably little gastronomic uh, dimension to it. So my, my point is that in, in, in we should not forget in the whole discussion, especially when you speak about plant-based foods, that plant-based foods is also all the raw things that you can harvest in the field. These are the cabbages, the, all the, 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 the fruit and vegetables. We have, as you know, or I don't know if you know, but I can disclose the fact this year we have the foul year of fruit and vegetables. So my point is, Plant-based food is, is, is really great, but we should not fall into the, 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 the trap with the ultra-processed foods that any biomass could be sort of uh, uh, processed in, in endless ways. So I couldn't agree more. Gastronomy is so, so important. Uh, Francesca, if I... If I um... Sorry, could you hear me? Could you see me? Yeah. I had... Yeah some troubles with my computer and my camera, but I think I am back. Thank you, and, 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 and sorry. I've got another question by Guillem Bogunia. Uh, it says, insights about what is the market of supplementary diet in the Nordic countries? So this is addressed to the Nordic. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I can start out, and uh, Ben, you are more than welcome to um, could you add. Uh, I'm not quite sure that I un understand the question, but the fact is that uh, we do work a lot with uh, innovating uh, food products to people with special needs in Denmark, and we have really good um, we have good uh, experiences in doing this. So we've been uh, innovating um, uh, food products with a higher level of protein to people with uh, uh, eating habits, um, uh, people with uh, sicknesses which needs uh, supplemented diets and so on. So there is a lot of innovation going on in uh, developing products in this uh, category. And I will say that uh, from a Danish perspective, we have a very strong ingredient sector, uh, which develop ingredients also uh, that will and, and are able to support special dietary um, uh, needs. And uh, from that point of view, we stand quite strong in uh, supporting the, the people with special uh, dietary needs, uh, I would say so, in the Nordic countries. We have good examples. Uh, and, and maybe you will add something here, Pet. But I can just say I couldn't agree more. We have a very good examples where, and, and also very good examples of partnerships, private business, small businesses that develop some kind of new, new protein enriched a product that is suited to uh, the elderly at a home, uh, living at home or in hospitals that have speci special uh, dietary requirements. So, um, so, uh, so there's both a strong research and strong um, network of companies that that, that has a very uh, large uh, portfolio of these kind of products. So we, I mean, I'm sure Lisa and, and I together could be could connect you with uh, some interesting partners if you <clears throat> if you want to want to do that. 
But I would like to add as well that this not only includes people with special dietary needs, and I think that might be the interesting part to bring up here, because uh, looking at how to transform food systems, we need to not only look at people with special dietary needs, we need also to make all of us um, change our food intake. So we need to develop products with higher level of fibers, uh, lower in, in um, uh, content of uh, salt, fat, sugar, and so on. And as Ben just mentioned, we have a long tradition of working across uh, the value chain, including the expertise from researchers, the political level organization, and certainly also the companies. And this is actually the way that, that we have succeeded. I'll just uh, include the, the whole grain um, initiative in Denmark, where we have succeeded in developing, innovating a wide range of products with a higher level of whole grain in it. And that has been done because it is documented that if we all uh, have a higher intake of whole grain, we will lower the risk of developing cancer uh, all of us. So it might seem crazy uh, to people in the southern part of Europe that we would eat pasta with whole grain or bread with more whole grain and so on. But that's a fact from a Danish perspective. And we see that consumers actually do this. So the products that people are buying, no matter what, pasta, bread and so on, if we add the, the whole grain and do it in, of course, an innovative and really good way, people will do that. And that's one of my key messages as well. I think we, make, we have to make it easy for consumers to take these choices. And that's where all the stakeholders has a big responsibility to make it easy for consumers to make these healthy choices. Thank you, Lise. Um... We are really running out of time. I've got two more questions. I would convey the questions to you, and if you can be very specific and very short, uh, and then we will uh, be reaching the end of the conference. Um, the question that comes along now is to Lise again and to Ramon. Um, it's by Anna Puchderajolf, and she says, uh, I'd like to ask for the food social dimension access to food, food security. Is this dimension taken into consideration when defining new food models in both countries? If you can be very, very short and specific, I will appreciate it. Thank you. Should I start? I think it was Ramon. Oh, sorry. Ramon, well, uh, I mean, the, 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 the hey. question is posed to Ramon and Lise, but... Ben, ben, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I realized it was it was not addressed to me. Anyway, I'll, I'll give it a shot because I think food security is, is very important in urban food strategies uh, at development. We see, I mean, research why we see, we speak about food justice, we speak about food citizenship, food sovereignty. There's a lot of words out there, but I, we we shouldn't. I couldn't agree more. We should not forget the food security part because this is about availability, and I think. My point would be, or my take on that would be, if you include the citizens, if you make sure to, to develop some kind of governance model that includes the citizens and that includes, includes the young entrepreneurs, the young people, then uh, automatically you would be able to take care of the food security and the availability um, part of it. And just uh, to add very briefly from my perspective, uh, food security is key when working with uh, new systems, also from a Danish perspective. I mean, we would never uh, start out any new pro projects uh, here in Denmark or when we engage globally. And I think the security issue is a global issue. And I think it would be really interesting to talk about this uh, from a global perspective. Because this is uh, completely different from our part of the world to the to the southern hemisphere, where the situation is completely different. 
than what we are facing. So food security issue is highly relevant to discuss even deeper, I think. Ramon? Um, I totally agree. Um, uh, it takes a very holistic view on uh, this concept of food security in terms of health, but uh, and I try to explain this in, in my short presentation uh, that for us, uh, it goes also involved with this concept of security uh, for the, the, the people working for the companies, etc. So it has to have a very holistic view. For us, it's a priority. It's also a, a value, added value. Um, we, from Prodeco, we work very much uh, helping or uh, working together with companies to sell the products abroad internationally. One of the values is precisely, probably the one of the most important in, in many markets, it's probably this concept of food security. So for us, it's, it's a priority and I totally agree. Also try to, to explain it a bit, this concept of co-governments, of involving all the different agents, all the stakeholders in the find it, in implementing this concept of food security. Okay, thank you. Now, I've got two questions to issues. Vini, I think you are known as Vini because the questions <laughs> are addressed to Vini Martini. Uh, one is by, posed by Seneca Pelano Jensen. Um, I imagine it's, she's a woman. She says, interesting talk, Vini Martini, really inspiring, grand project. Is it possible to reach out or connect the idea to other food systems, not only in Catalonia, but also, for example, out in the north? This is the first one. And I would like also to read the second one um, posed by Rosa Guma. She says uh, to Vini, could you give some examples of collaborations with entrepreneurs regarding Alicia innovation and R&D? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, first, uh, going to the first uh, question, uh, I, I do think uh, it has to be connected. Huh? When, when I said that uh, we were born from this food re revolution here in Catalonia, uh, we were followed by, by, by the Nor Nordic diet, the Nordic food as well. So I think our food system is a uh, link together with, uh, with uh, the Nordic food system and working together is key for, for, for progressing. And I think uh, this, this webinar is, is the reason for that, I think is to, to create those links. But, uh, and, 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 and going towards the second question, uh, regarding uh, an idea of, of how, how we develop uh, uh, our, our innovation area. Um, we, we work, as I said, with different stakeholders and we think that uh, uh, it's, it's as important to, to, to influence and to be together with a group of kids in a school the same way as, as uh, working with a, a multinational, for example. And the reason for that is uh, why we are we very, have a very strong impact in a school, we have a little impact in in uh, in, a, in a, a, a big company, but at the same time, the reach of the impact we have is very high. So we think that uh, uh, the, the the innovation in, in, in with, together with the food industry is very relevant on that. And um, just to 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 understand a few. Uh, I think uh, the the drivers of the customers are shifting. So I think when when BZ and Bent also said that uh, it's very important to to bring the customers inside the development, and they they are right because uh, they are changing what they want. Uh, they are looking for products that has more fiber or it's made of a uh, 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 it's, it's taking into consideration no communicable communicable diseases like cancer, diabetes, hypercholesteremia, and so on. So the information is, people is getting more informed and they, they are looking for more. So th those drivers, those consumer drivers are, are changing. And I think the industry is understanding this shift and they're looking forward for alternatives. So I think this is where we are able to, to envision um, a new link inside the food system and change things a lot. So I think this collaboration together, it's, it's very important on that. Good. This is the very last, okay? <laughs> and if you can be very straight to the point, there is a last question to Lise by Roger San Andres. He says, I'd like to ask Lise about what is 
the Danish government position concerning genetically modified foods? <laughs> Okay, and that is the last question. I'm very happy to have this last question as well. Well, uh, well, um, we are not allowed uh, to use genetically modified uh, organisms in our food production uh, in the open area as the situation is for the moment. So that's the short answer. So that's a, a political framework for working with GMOs in Denmark as it is uh, right now. Okay, uh, thank you. I, yeah, Ramon. May I say just, uh, e Europe in general is very much against GMOs, genetically modified uh, organisms, and their of production. But uh, directly or, or indirectly, we consume uh, genetically modified products. We buy soya beans, we buy maize, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they are uh, the, we give them to the animals, etc. So. It's an issue that uh, it's a very complex issue. Let's leave it there. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, all of you, because uh, and of course, thank you to the audience for the for the questions you have posed. Because I think there are so many, but but uh, I think the debate and all together has been very interesting, very insightful for all of us. I found it so 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 rich. Um, we have reached the end. And let me just uh, add my final remarks. Ramon has said it, Barcelona in 2021 is the world capital of sustainable food. But uh, the main aim for Barcelona, for our capital, uh, being the, the, the capital of sustainable food this very year, is to raise consciousness. And this is, in fact, what we have intended to do today from the delegation of the Catalan government to the yeah. Nordic countries by organizing this event to make aware to all of us that we must align our actions and activities towards a more sustainable model for the future. But let me finish by quoting the words of some of the most renowned and top chefs in Catalonia. Their statement is part of a TV commercial uh, released on Catalan television nowadays, these very days. And they uh, made this is statement as uh, be, uh, reacting or as part of the disruptive times that we are uh, facing and living. Thus, uh, they say, and as a statement, I'm quoting, okay, this is what the, the, the chefs in Catalonia say. They say, we will be working with the best producers. We will work from dusk to dawn. We will continue to seek excellence, obsessively caring for every detail with the highest level of professionalism. We will be doing research, innovation. We will create, always being non-conformist, but humbling. We will continue to work as we have always done. We will continue to do the same thing that has made us the best gastronomy in the world. We will be taking care of the well-being of your body and soul. I don't think we can end up this event today with a better and wiser words. Thank you again. Thank you so much for your participation. Thanks to the speakers. Thanks to the audience. And let me thank today most particularly to my team for making possible to present the conference we have done in the context of the North-South Dialogues from the Catalan delegation to the Nordics. Have a really nice afternoon.